morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode with Dr. Vlad the Vet. It's currently 3.24 a.m. and I'm just about to leave home to head to the first herd health check of the day. This is our earliest one that we have. It starts at 4 a.m. So why don't you come along with me and see what it's all about. I hope you all enjoyed the last episode. I know it was a long one um, and it was pretty much just me talking the whole time. So this time I'm going to spend some time showing you guys cows. I'm trying to explain what we're doing a little bit if I can and then uh, yeah we'll just see what the episode gets into. Um, the week started off today's Wednesday. On Monday I uh, had a herd check. Um, it was a long one. I remember it was a long one. My arm was getting <laughs> starting to get a little tired um, and then in the afternoon we have um, every Monday we have doctors meetings and uh, social media team meetings. Um, yesterday I spent the whole day actually with uh, Dr. Favaro. She's responsible for the equine side of things at the practice. Um, we spent the morning looking at a horse with possible equine Cushing's. Um, so PPID, we pulled a blood sample, um, did a health exam. Um, and did a sheath cleaning on that horse. After that, we went to go look at a horse who foaled um, four days ago, I believe, and is starting to have or starting to show signs of laminitis. Um, so we did an exam on that horse, found that metritis is the potential cause um, leading to the laminitis. So we did a uterine flush on that horse. Um, prescribe some antibiotics and we'll be prob and we will probably be going back to do more flushing of the uterus in that horse. Um, after that we had more horses, um, some follicle checks at the clinic and then we drove out to a boarding facility where we did where we pulled blood for Coggins and also microchip to yearling colts. So it was a busy day, lots of driving, um, but today on the schedule we have a, a big herd health in the morning um, and we'll see what else comes as the day goes along. Um, once again, always like, share, subscribe. I appreciate all the support thus far. And if you didn't watch my last video, there's a giveaway within that video. So after the, you finish watching this video, go back and uh, put that video on. Uh, with it being a long one, you can put it on while you're driving and just listen to it. There's no visual unless you want to see me blow a bubble on my shirt out of my nose. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, sit back, relax, enjoy, um, and we'll see you throughout the video.
going to the next barn on the back of a truck. Sergio's back there on a golf cart with a nice light bar. Oh man, this is the moment you live for. Let's watch him pull up. <laughs> that thing's got four by four. So what they do here is that they flood the alleys in order to remove all the manure. They don't have scrapers and then they recycle the water. Alrighty everyone, so I just wanted to interrupt and provide you with a little bit of extra information as to why this video is titled, We Make Cows Pee. As you see in that little clip um, before my interruption here, we're actually stimulating the cows by rubbing just underneath um, their vulva to stimulate the excretion of their urine. And what we do with that urine is we put it in that little test tree you saw in the clip and what it does it measures the pH of the urine so the pH essentially measures how acidic something is or how basic something is um, so with these cows specifically they are close-up cows which means that they are close to um, partrition close to calving that means they're heavily pregnant and we want to be able to monitor them um, in order to potentially prevent any type of metabolic diseases that could happen post parturition. The specific one that we're worried about um, in these close-up cows is hypocalcemia or better known throughout the industry as milk fever. So what that is, is cows essentially not having enough calcium within their system to produce the milk that they're producing, but to also have enough flowing through their bodies for their bodies to use for moving around, for muscle metabolism, et cetera, et cetera just the daily functioning of a cow. So these cows, essentially from when they're born and throughout the rest of their lives, their diet is managed much better than definitely my diet and I'm sure definitely better than most human diets in the world. Um, throughout each stage of their life, they're getting a diet that's combined with different ingredients, uh, made to meet certain requirements. And with these specific cows, what we're looking at is something called DCAD, um, so the difference between cations and anions within their diet um, and what we want to do is play with that diet so that the urine pH that's coming out of their back end um, is within that 5.5 to 6.5 range. And why do we want it within that range? Um, with it being an acidic value, the 5.5 to 6.5, cows that are more acidic obviously not severely acidic all the way on one end of the spectrum um, but are within that 5.5 to 6.5 um, it's been scientifically proven that those cows are better at having the metabolized level of calcium within their system post calving to be able to not only provide the amount of milk um, that they provide but to also provide them with the right amount of calcium for their everyday functioning whether that be getting up going to the feed bunk moving um, it just provides them with that calcium for their muscles and their bodies to be functioning properly 
and to not push them too far into metabolic acidosis or to push them too high on the other side where they don't have enough calcium um, to meet the highest production standards that these different dairy farms might have. So yeah, I mean, long story short, that's what we're doing. We're making these cows pee. We're testing the urine pH in order to see if what they're eating is going to help them currently, but also once they do calf, if their close-up ration is providing them with the right amount of anions and cations so that after they calve, they don't have um, the issue of hypocalcemia or milk fever. Um, stay tuned. We're going to post a good summary of this with Dr. Sergio Pereira on the Azores Veterinary Practice Instagram page. Um, so he'll be able to go more into depth as to why we're doing what we're doing and how it'll benefit producers if they actually allow their veterinarians to do these types of tests. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, please bash me in the comments um, and I'll do a better job next time. But it made sense in my mind and if it made sense in yours, perfect. If not, um, reach out to me and I'll be sure to explain a little bit better. Thank you everybody once again um, and continue on with the video. I know it's a little bit shorter than the last one, but as time goes on, I'm definitely going to try and make them shorter just so that people are more willing to watch them and sit down within a short span of time and get their dose of Dr. Vlad the Vet. Thank you and stay safe out there.